Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I'm very happy because I've been bringing so many interviews to this channel. But today, my guest is none other than the very lovely SoCal Val. What's up, Val? How are you? Oh, hey, girl. Hey, I'm so excited to talk to you today because we met uh, virtually. We'll have to meet in person sometime at the Wrestle Talk uh, virtual meetup thing. And I got to tell you, I was like, this is my kind of girl. So this is not even an interview. This is just a chat with a, with a cool lady. Yes. And you know, it's so funny because I, that's really the only interaction that we had was on Russell Talk and we all bonded and got along so well. But I feel like after that, you know, everybody's so busy that like, you know, things just come up and you never like circle back with one another. And then I saw that you tagged me on Twitter uh, promoting WrestleMania and I was like, Oh, I had seen what you guys did the first time around. And I was like, this is perfect. I need to get her on the show. We need to talk about it. That's so nice of you, because not only did you uh, help social media wise with retweeting and everything, but you actually reached out, which is so freaking cool, because Dresselmania is not just for girls. We actually have men donating. We have a lot of men that I've tagged and retweeted. We've got D.S. Shin from Ring the Bell, who's another you know advocate of women's wrestling. I'm sure you know him, just an absolute star, just as yourself. And he was the same thing. He was like, you know, how can I help? So he's going to actually be at the event and doing kind of red carpet interviews and stuff. So it's nice when people kind of come out of the woodwork, because, you know, we don't want to ask everybody like, hey, what can you do? Of what course. can you do next? So for you to just come out of the blue and just say, hey, how can I help was so freaking lovely. So thank you for that. No, you're welcome. Like the way that I see things, it's like, you know what? Like if I have a platform and I can use it to do something to help somebody else. And that's the thing that you guys, you know, and I'll let you give more detail about this, but address WrestleMania 2, we'll get right into it. I know you guys are helping benefit tag, tag me in. And that mm -hmm. is such a good cause. So let's just kind of yeah. start from there. Like tell the people about WrestleMania 2, especially for those of the, uh, for those of those who don't know about Dress WrestleMania because it's such an awesome thing. Thank you. It, it is awesome. And you know what? We we started it. Um, I mean, we started God TV kind of in in the pandemic in the lockdown. We were thinking, okay, what can we do virtually to kind of keep in touch with people and have like a chat show? But then um, with WrestleMania, we decided to do like a charity, pick a new charity every single year. Last year was the first WrestleMania, but we couldn't really you know, do anything um, in person because of the pandemic. So we did it virtually. We raised almost $10,000 for Girl Up, which is a female. I know. I was shocked. too. I was like, oh, my God, thanks to everyone who donated and, like, freaking, I mean, these dresses from wrestling people and, and people from different genres, which I'll explain in a moment. But we did really well last year with Girl Up, uh, which focused on, you know, helping young girls with confidence and, and, and mental health, things like that. But this year with our the unfortunate uh, passing of our friend Daphne, we thought we've got to do something to honor her. We've got to do something to kind of, you know, get the uh, the stigma of mental health away. We've got to talk about it. We've got to talk about Tag Me In. And so it was a perfect fit with Christy Hemming and Gail Kim and all of the Impact Wrestling knockouts, which of course is very near and dear to our hearts because Mickey, Mickey James, Lisa Marie Barron and myself, who were the, you know, the God TV, Grown Ass Women TV trifecta, we've all been in Impact. So we know these girls and, and we all know Daphne. So it's something that, you know, Yes, we love picking a charity, but this one was really, really personal to us. And I won't get upset because I am the crier of the group, but we just wanted to honor her and her family and make sure that people were, you know, donating for a cause that we know would go to the right place. So Tag Me In benefits NAMI. And if you look them up, Tag Me In United, they're on social media. That is our uh, our partnership this year. And what Dressmania is, is mainly, and it's, it, there's a lot of cool different facets to it now, but mainly it's um, eBay auctions. So photo, photo shoot and event worn, uh, mainly dresses from girls like, I mean, last year we had Tori Wilson, Candice Michelle, Trish Stratus, some people that had, uh, you know, these huge names of wrestling helped us out. Uh, Paige, uh, Natalia. We've got even uh, more girls that are joining now because we've got NWA Empower ladies that are getting on board. We've got Impact Wrestling ladies that are coming together to donate dresses, dresses, ring gear. We've got guys donating, you know, Zoom calls and, and video shout outs, signed 8 by 10s ring jackets, things like that. So as it's coming together, we're starting to get more and more donations and it's all going to be on eBay. 100% of the auction proceeds benefit Tag Me In. But then we also have some other things that we're doing. You can actually donate in person. You can donate online. If you can't be at the event virtual uh, in person, you can donate virtually. But luckily, now that Miss Rona is sort of subsiding just a bit, I mean, what a biot she is, right? <laughs> exactly. Biggest heel. Biggest heel of all. Biggest heel. Who invited her? She doesn't even go here. I can't I was going to say she doesn't even go here. No, <laughs> I right? love it. We're she on the same gotta go. vibe here. <laughs> Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> I knew it. But yeah, so she, you know, since that's sort of subsiding, we can finally do something in person now. And the, and the lovely people of WrestleCon at High Spots, they um, are allowing us to do the event there. So Saturday, April 2nd, it's the very last portion of WrestleCon. So everyone's done signing from 2 to 3 p.m. 
we're, we're, we're calling Dresselmania to almost like a cocktail reception. It's very VIP, very cute. We're doing a champagne toast, uh, pre-sales, which I know you're going to luckily, thank you so much. You're going to link for us. Pre-sale tickets are available right now through simple ticks and you can actually come hang out with us. Me, Mickey and Lisa will be there in our dresses that we're donating. And, uh, we're going to have super surprise celebrity guests. I mean, celebrity friends. Is there any other kind? They're going to be coming through. Everyone's really busy. We want to be respectful of people people's time. But a lot of the girls that are donating dresses and some of the guys are going to stop by and hang out. Plus, we're filming a live episode of God TV there during Dresselmania. And like I said, champagne toast. We're going to have opportunities to donate even more. So it's going to be a really great thing. And thank goodness now it's an in-person thing. And I think every year it's going to get bigger and bigger. So yes, we got a great donation last year. But I hope this year it's even bigger and better. Let's hope. I think so too. And I feel like because this is benefiting such a good cause and even like the girl up that you guys did last year, like I love girl up, like just based on what I know from that, like that's really cool. And now, you know, obviously with tag me in, it goes a lot deeper than, Hey, just a charity. Obviously there's a lot more of a personal meaning there. So I think like that was the one thing that when immediately I saw it, I thought, you know, like I'm drawn to this because this is such a good thing to do. And also yeah. what I particularly love about it. And here's the thing is that like, you know, wrestling is very like, obviously it's very male dominant. We got a lot of men and we get to a lot of manly events. Like for the most part, there's like yeah. manly events. There's not like something that, you know, when I was looking at the Dresselmania 2 flyer and I was seeing like, oh, we're going to get, you're going to get champagne. And yeah. you know, this, I'm thinking this is cute. Like this is chic. This is something that is for, I think like for everybody, but it also is something so different where it's like, if you're a female, uh, you know, fan, or you're a guy who wants to take his girl out, you know, someplace for, you know, WrestleMania week. Where do you go? Let's go to WrestleMania. That's so, that's so cool and astute that you noticed that because that's what I think sets the event apart from other events. Like we wanted it to be like, you know, God TV is, you know, we call it the ultimate slumber party. It, it by the way, I already, by the for those uh, watching and listening, I had a verbal agreement that Denise is coming on God TV immediately. She yes. has to, she has to be yes. on the member, totally. Uh, that's just going to happen. I, 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 I will say this. So that verbal agreement is, uh, in, in null and void. Um, anyway, like, that's a handshake. That's it. Handshake it's agreement. We got handshake. it. <laughs> if you're coming on TV, we would love to have you. It'd be amazing. Thank but while that's the ultimate slumber party and like cocktails and fun and pajamas, this is something that like, other than Hall of Fame, which by the way, fans don't even really get to dress up to go to that. They're not really invited. They just sort of watch it with all due respect to WWE. But this is something like, hey, we all want to dress up, have a little cocktail, hang out with us. It's a, it's a VIP area where you're all invited. Come with us, talk to us, get a selfie, you know, take a look at the dresses, take a look on how you want to donate. And listen, we don't expect anyone to donate beyond their means, but if you want to donate, you know, five bucks, we're going to have little donation areas. If you want to just get a selfie, whatever, there's so many ways to like interact with us. And of course be a part of God TV, which is so much fun. And we're going to get a lot of great footage um, out of it as well. But it's just something that, like you said, is a little upscale, a little bit different. And we hope people will like dress up. You don't have to, but you dress up. You know, it feels like you're at a cocktail party with us. Yes. And it's a lot of camaraderie. And that's what God TV is about. And because this is so, you know, all encompassing with this charity, we want it to be a really fun, um, engaging and um, inclusive environment. So let me ask you, I, I don't know if you already put this information out there, but who are some of the dresses that you're going to be having at the event? Maybe some of the auctions that we can expect? I'm so glad you asked because we're being very secretive about it. Cause somebody asked me, I think it was DS Shin was like, well, who's going to be at the party? And I said, well, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to um, be disrespectful of anyone's time. So we've invited tons of people, but you know, who knows who's going to stop by. It's going to be like celebrity cameo. Ooh, celebrity cameo. There's story. There's Gail. There's Chris. There's Christy. So, you know, and of course DS Shin will be there like, Oh, who are you wearing? You look great. <laughs> but, um, as far as the, the donations, I'll tell you. So obviously me, Mickey and Lisa have donated uh, fabulous dresses. Like Lisa's actually donated this fabulous onesie. Mickey donated a dress that she wore. I believe it's the spike TV awards, like on the red carpet. They and the thing is, we always say to people like, donate what you can. But they always go into their archives and donate amazing things. Tasha Steele donated a beautiful dress. Chelsea Green. But I gotta tell you, one of the first girls to donate, and I just get chills thinking about it. I swear, Molly Holly, who has oh. just stuck. Yeah, exactly. There you go. That's always the reaction. <laughs> she has such a sterling reputation, girl. She didn't just donate a dress like, oh, I wore this once. She's donating her. I can't even. I just got chills again. She is donating her. It makes me want to cry her WWE Hall of Fame dress to this car. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, talk about I someone say, that I feel like thigh like, chills right now, like, too, as well. Hey. And I was like, is she sure? Like, this is a huge collector's item. And this is something that, again, it makes, it makes me cheer up because it's just like, it's going to fetch a great price and it's going to all go to such a great cause, especially honoring our friend that I just thought, wow, this is like serious business. So 
everyone's donating amazing things. And that's wonderful. But when Molly came through with that, I was like, girl, that is so generous. Like, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Like, I know this is my event, but are you sure? Yeah. Like, I'm like, this is a museum kind of collective. This is WWE Hall of Fame. This is serious yeah. business. And she looked amazing, of course, in it. But yeah. So, oh my there, God, that is so cool. Yeah. It's going to be star studded. And are you going to be at WrestleCon? So I'm going to like I'm I'm supposed to after this interview I'm supposed to be scheduling my week out because it is kind okay. of insane. Uh, so I'm basically like looking at everything and putting everything together. So I'm like, okay, guys, I got to look at my schedule because it's kind of hectic this time around. But yes. um, but it's like there's just so much going on, and I think a lot of it is also like, hey, like people, you know, we've been in the shadows waiting for you know COVID to essentially you know chill a bit, and yeah. you know now this is really feels like the first like real uh, WrestleMania week since like the last time in New York, you know, like I don't remember like feeling this like event the way that we usually felt it in such a long time. So I think it is kind of cool that there's so much uh, going on and whatnot. So uh, let me go ahead and ask you, like in terms of putting this event together, what are some of like the bigger like struggles or like, uh, like just kind of what's the process like of putting an event like this together? Well, again, this is kind of our first in-person one, but I mean, even just virtually, it's it's really just, it's, you know what it is? It's bugging people. It's one of those things where you like, the, the, the problem, even like getting guests for our show, like, and you, I'm sure you understand too, because you know everyone in wrestling, it's sort of like, you don't ever want to bug someone, but you're like, I'd love to have you on the show, or I'd love to have you donate, but people are busy. And especially, you know, the high profile people that are actively wrestling or actively on a, you know, big wrestling roster. That's been the thing where it's like, I know everyone wants to donate and a lot of people will go like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. But it's just sort of like, hey, we still need those photos. So it's, it's one of those things that people are really generous, but they're just busy because let's be honest, they're like wrestling celebrities. They're out there hustling. So that's one thing that's been, you know, we and, and we try to straddle that line of like they're friends of ours, but we yeah. also want to get, you know, our business taken care of and get those donations in as much as we can. Um, and the logistics of it too, like you said, it's sort of just, um, it's a crazy, it's a good problem to have, but there's so much damn wrestling that's going on that week. Like I'm doing Fight TV pre presenting and different things and, uh, hosting the shenanigans party for Kevin Nash and things like that. And that's great, but it's literally just, okay, hour to hour, where am I going to be? So exactly. anywhere that you are, even if it's just coming to grab a selfie with us, we'd love to have you and just oh, yes, please. celebrate you. <laughs> but yeah, anyone that's at WrestleCon, it's at, the good thing is it's at that event. It's in that same venue. I believe, I'm not sure which ballroom it is, but it's one of the ballrooms. And we just thought, wow, how easy that as soon as we get done signing, go to the WrestleMania event. That's when the party starts. And actually for Mickey, Lisa, and myself, I can speak for all three of us and saying that after that, after we're done signing that day on Saturday, we're done. We're done working. So guess what? The cocktails will be flowing. The unfiltered conversation is going to be hilarious. I can't wait. Oh my God, that sounds incredible. So now with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, shift gears a little bit because obviously, you know, with God TV, you guys have done numerous episodes now. This has been going on for a bit. And here's the thing that I kind of was looking at this. It's like, it's one thing I think to have a podcast, but there's another thing to have a friendships. And you, Mickey James and Victoria, uh, you guys seem pretty close. And based on what I've seen from, you know, God TV, it seems that you guys are pretty close. So I kind of want to ask you, what has it been like to not only be able to grow this podcast together but to also have these like female relationships with Mickey and Victoria and kind of get to put all of this together because I don't know like it is so important for like I mean you know since mental health is obviously a topic it is so important to have such like meaningful friendships like for yeah. mental health like just going out with your friends and having a conversation is so important and you guys get to do that on your podcast so like I kind of want to get an idea of how that has sort of like influenced you there how they've influenced you and also impacted your life yeah great question thank you yeah the girls you know I, I always tell people like I'm a girl's girl it's funny because yes I have a lot of guy friends through wrestling and that's all well and good and I love you know my guy friends and my husband and you know men in my life that's lovely but I'm such a girl's girl like I need like female energy like it happens a lot here in England where my husband's British I've been here about six years and god bless him he's just you know always out with his guys and I'm usually out with the guys and I'm like there are nine dudes and I'm like I need to talk about lip gloss I don't know what's going on <laughs> so I am such a girl's girl and for that reason it's it's funny because not everyone realizes like how much of a girl's girl Mickey and Lisa are. Now they kind of get it, but you know, they're these kind of tough wrestlers. So when, when you, I mean, we literally talk all day, every day on, on an app called boxer. It's just like a voice messaging thing. It'll change your life. Guys No, we're not sponsored by them. We just talk about it all the time. And you know, that's how we do our business. That's how we catch up, whatever we can vent. If we're having a bad day, whatever. But not only that, but Melina, we talk to a lot of our girlfriends in wrestling all the time. And I think that's so good for your mental health. When I go home to Orlando, I have kind of my uh, army. Usually they're all blonde, weirdly enough. My blonde army of girlfriends that I, you know, 
I, I literally, I, my friend goes, oh my gosh, we're very Valley Girl. They're all like named like Marissa and Whitney and like Meredith. We're all very that. that. <laughs> oh, I get you. Well, it's like Los Angeles native right here. So it's like, yeah, we get it. Yeah. And I literally lived in the Valley for a while. So I can't even like, and that's, that explains a lot about it. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so my girlfriend was like, oh my God, you're like a Tesla. And I was like, why? And she goes, when you come home, you like need to recharge. And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> so sad because after COVID, you know, well, I hadn't been home in like two months. And when I went, or no, it's two months, my God, two years. And when I saw her and my other girlfriends, I was like, I could do this. I could go and like decompress in this weird way that no offense that male companions and, and friendships do not you know, yeah. feed that sort of energy. So I am being a girl's girl. That's kind of what I love the most about God TV. Yes, we have a lot of guys on the show. Yes, it's not only wrestling people, but it really is. That's why we wanted the slumber party vibe because how I describe it is like, and, and Denise, hopefully we'll do this in Dallas. If you're at an event, right? And like the event's over, me, Mickey and Lisa would go back to our rooms. All right, who's got the bottle of wine? I'll meet you in your room. Okay. And we're in robes or pajamas and we're just talking BS and just unfiltered giggling. That oh, the show is, and that is yeah. literally the vibe that we wanted. People come on the show and we're like, we're not going to ask you the same questions of like, oh, so what do you think? It's just fun and road stories and silliness. And that's why I think it works. And that's why we have so much fun with it. To say that it's like, oh, I'm doing work makes no sense to me. It's just fun. It really is. That is just so cool. And I'm just so glad that like you're able to have something like that because it really is just like so ridiculously important. Like yeah. I think you mentioned like this thing. It's like you always like, yeah, like friendships, like even if you have friendships with guys, it's cool, right? Like you're cool and you have those friendships, but there's nothing like girl talk. There's nothing like, you know, being able to admit things to your other friends that you might not want to admit to other people and getting that like, you know, that uh, reassurance of that is okay and let's talk yeah. about it. So I think that's really like just, incredibly awesome and you guys have you know you've grown your audience now so I want to ask you about that like what has been like the reaction from your viewers and your fans like when they first go in and start watching this show for the first time etc well um what's funny is I was just explaining this to someone the other day about shipping things out like we always thought that you know our primary audience would be in the U.S. and it might be but like we couldn't believe how many European fans and Australian fans and Indian fans and Pakistan people in Pakistan and um, China I mean people all over the world love the show and I'm not trying to say oh we're global but it's one of those things <laughs> yeah, we didn't, yeah, yeah, we didn't yeah. think about that we thought okay wrestling's mostly a U.S. thing me being in the U.K. and wrestling being, being in the U.K. sure but like our repeat loyal customers we have a Patreon and, you know, we have a top tier, we call it gorgeous. And we do this little thing and we have like chats with them. I would say 90% of them are in Europe or abroad. It's it's crazy. So for that reason, we were very surprised by the location of the audience. And I think that um, it was interesting to sort of, and I'm sure you've done it with your show, sort of like, you know, you see what works, like throwing spaghetti at a wall. You see other, and we thought, okay, well, you know, if we have a drag queen on, that's totally my MO, I'm a huge drag race fan. We have a drag queen on or we have like taylor dane or we have carol baskin all these random people that are not from wrestling uh, and you know um talk about the paranormal or psychic readings and things like that we kind of were like mm, this is what we're interested in but we're not sure if that's going to translate and if it's going to like do well and that's been really really pleasantly surprising that people go wow i never saw that side of mickey before wow i never knew that about lisa lisa one time was talking about having a career before wrestling in the medical field and doing like surgeries. Like we had no idea. I didn't even know that. I don't, so, I'm, I'm, this is news to me. <laughs> girl, that episode, she's talking about like people's eyeballs. Like it's, it's amazing, but it's like, it's very fascinating, but there's so many different levels and complexities to Mickey and Lisa and myself, but especially them, because, you know, again, they're seen as these big, you know, wrestlers, um, tough wrestlers that just kind of have this one persona. It's kind of more of a, you know, yeah, it's a character and it's them, but there's a lot, you know, Mickey's a mom. We touch on that all the time. So for that reason, it's really been cool that people are receptive to non-wrestling content as well. I love no, that. I think so too. I think because like there is so much wrestling content out there that sometimes you want to see, well, what is this person's thoughts, you know, about yeah. this versus like what everybody's talking about and whatnot. So it is cool to kind of like break down that wall and get to know people. Cause I think at the end of the day, that's what makes a podcast work is being yeah. relatable. And if someone could come in and watch a show and be like, Hey, you know what? I relate to Mickey and Valid, you know, and Victoria, you know, like you, you, re you relate to this I keep calling her Victoria, but I'm like, Lisa, I just yeah. like it just stuck in my head as Victoria. Chair, but, she's got yeah. so many personalities, you know? 
<laughs> exactly. So I'm like, okay, like let me, you know, rephrase that. But um, but no, it is cool because you get to find people that you know you're you you feel like you relate to and whatnot. So that's awesome. Yeah. So um, I kind of want to shift uh, gears now, and I do want to ask you because you know you mentioned being a girl's girl, but you also are you know still very active. You've taken so many numerous roles throughout your career and wrestling. You know, you've done a little bit of everything. I've worn many different hats, and I know that tomorrow you're going to be at Progress. I know you're going to be doing commentary. So yeah. I kind of want to ask you, you know, what's it been like to still be taking like active bookings and doing all of this and, you know, uh, getting these opportunities to do commentary. I know you guys do commentary for Fight TV as well for yeah. uh, the last Impact show. So it's like, uh, how's it been like taking all of those opportunities? Well, thank you. Yeah, we're actually doing um, Impact Wrestling. We do alternative con commentary with Tracy Brooks, Lisa slash Tara slash Victoria, and myself, <laughs> which is really fun. So we've done it. We've done it twice now, and then we're going to do it next month. Um, April twenty third is the next one, so it's a lot of fun. And yeah, I love commentary. I was just explaining to Lisa the other day how, like, I you know I always wanted to be a manager and a valet, but then you know there's longevity, as you probably know, in like the hosting, the presenting, that kind of thing, because then you're seen as not just this one character whose storyline could be over. You're actually seen as somebody who can hold your own in interviews and commentary, things like that. Um, commentary for Progress is really exciting because it's an all-female show. <clears throat> and I didn't really understand this until we had a meeting. It's not just all-female competitors. It's all-female commentary, female ring announcer, female refs. Like, it is literally hashtag who run the world. So when I heard about the show, I was excited. But the more and more I kept seeing people's, first of all, kept seeing people's reactions on social media, how excited they were. And when I kept hearing more about the show and how it was going to be really female-focused, I was like, this is totally up my alley. I'm really excited for that. So yeah, that's tomorrow in London. But yeah, when I, you know, when I moved out of the States, I was about, let's see, around 2013 as I left Impact. And around like 2014 or 15, probably when I moved to the, uh, the UK. And honestly, I was like, I love wrestling. And if I get some wrestling bookings, that's cool. But I really wanted to try presenting in other areas. And wrestling just kind of kept coming up and kept coming up. And as my mother would say, it's a very Southern saying, dance with the one that brung you. Meaning, you know, wrestling is kind of the one that the, the genre that made me have any sort of a name or had, you know, any sort of um, opportunities, as you said, so poignantly. And I think it's interesting because when you sort of go, oh, you know, I'll try other things, opportunities sometimes come knocking on your door. So for me, the biggest one was WOS uh, on ITV. So World of Sport, we did a whole season on like a major network here. I guess I would equate it to like in the States, like an NBC, like it was a really big show. It was amazing. It was me, Stu Bennett, who's immensely talented and Alex Shane. And I just had tweeted Stu recently saying like, thank you for helping me on commentary because he made me a much better commentator. He's just flawless and so natural. Um, but that was a big opportunity. And then, you know, with progress, I thought, wow, not that I would ever shun wrestling away. And I'm so grateful for wrestling. And I still am that fangirl, you know, pretending to be Stephanie McMahon every day of my life. It's just my personal visa. But, um, but yeah, I think it's, it's interesting that even though the wrestling business is funny, because even though you try to do other things, you're always going to be that wrestling girl. And you kind of have to like be really grateful for that. I don't know why anybody would be like, well, you know, I did wrestling, but I'm different. No, I'm very proud to be from wrestling. And it's awarded me so many different things. To this day, I'm still actively doing commentary. It'll be my 20th year in the business. I count for my very first independent show uh, on the, the 30th um, of March. And that's 20 years starting at 16 years old. That's pretty insane. So I just feel really grateful to have that sort of longevity. That is amazing. And speaking of that longevity, obviously times have changed from, you know, when you were that 16 year old, you know, getting into the business and, you know, we've, especially for the evolution of women that, you know, you don't really, you, there's always less amount of women in the behind the scene roles. There's less women, you know, on the actual cards and whatnot. But, you know, in recent years, we've seen more of this movement uh, for putting more, uh, you know, women out there, more women matches, more, uh, you know, more women behind the scenes, et cetera, et cetera. So I do want to ask you, you know, from, from a person who's been in the business for you, you know, 20 years, how has it been like for you to see that change from when you first started and how women were perceived in wrestling to how they are now? And what do you feel has been like the biggest change or just like, kind of like talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, because you know, I think that the biggest shifts I saw were actually, and I'll give credit where credit is due is in, is in the knockouts division. Um, you know, there was a female, um, evolution or revolution that WWE did, and that's wonderful. But I will say that, um, I agree with people like Gail that say things like, well, impact wrestling really was kind of doing a, a lot more women's wrestling centric, uh, things before WWE and WWE has given great platforms to their women. But I think when it started to kind of go, Oh, you know, Gail Kim and Taryn Terrell, Gail and 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 Kong and, and Mickey and Gail and, you know, all of these different Lisa, uh, you know, it's it's just mind blowing that it's sort of kind of trickled down from there. I'm not saying that was the only place that it started, but that's when I was like, oh, 
the knockouts are now like really kicking ass and they're really getting that platform that the spotlight is on them where they deserve it. Um, but it's, what's interesting to me is like how the wrestling business ebbs and flows. It's like managers. Managers were really cool for a while and they kind of went away. And then it's like, we'll add one here and then we'll, you know, it's weird or tag team wrestling or, you know, high flying, whatever. With women, I find it interesting because when I was watching, there weren't a lot of serious women wrestlers at all. And it was like diva matches and stuff. Now, granted, I've gone on the record many times to say that I wanted to be a Tori Wilson or a Candice. I loved that sort of diva style stuff. But then what I liked about it is eventually they started to kind of do an amalgamation of both. So you had your Lita's, you had your Trish, who was Trish was that kind of diva side of things. Then she was training like hell and she became this like super serious great wrestler. And it was like, wow, holy moly, this is Trish she used to come out with the guys and just sort of, you know, be sexy. And she was still sexy as a wrestler, but she was really technically great. Um, and I think now we're kind of finally using that diversity to, to kind of get the best of all worlds. And to me, feminism, to get a little bit on my high horse here as a feminist, proud, proudly so, feminism is about choice. And if you choose to be just, a you know, not just a manager, but you choose to be a manager and not get involved physically, or you choose to be an announcer, like you and I, more of the speaking side of things, or you choose to be a ref or or a serious wrestler going after a championship belt. That is your choice. And I think real feminism and real change and real progress happens when we have all of that. Women don't fit into one box, okay, mind you. We're not, you know, the divas. We're not these serious girls who could, you know, I'm going to be judged because I'm wearing lipstick. No, 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 none of that. You do what you want to do, boo. And let's make sure that we're all like supporting each other and bringing each other, you know, up and, and rising up against that idea that women in wrestling have to be this one thing. We can do whatever the hell we want. And shows like Progress Who Run the World are changing that narrative. And and people like Mickey James uh, in particular that, that are knocking down that forbidden door with her sassy ass cowboy boot, they are the ones, my friends, that are the pioneers. People will look back and go, oh, that's when real change started to happen. And I'm just thrilled that as a wrestling fan, first and foremost, that it's a part of our generation. Like, how lucky are we? Exactly. And I have to say, I 100% agree with you. And this is something that, you know, even like in my personal journey, uh, you know, describing myself, you know, because for a long time, you know, you, you you were you were saying like, oh, I'm a feminist. People are like, look down on you. You know, you're gonna be like, oh, you're gonna be that girl with hairy armpits. And oh, I hate men and this and that, right? Yeah. But as like, and that's like the first thing that like, when you're like young, and you're learning what feminism is, you think like, oh, that's what you know, that's what the stigma of feminism is. But as you, you know, grow up, and you start to learn, and you know, really just, you know, mature in your mind, it's been interesting, because one of the things that like, I've gathered is like, for a long time, I thought, well, I'm a feminist, because I'm this career woman, and I'm career oriented, and you know, screw this and screw that. But then I realized I was wrong. I was wrong. And I realized that, okay, just because you're a career woman, and just because someone decides to be a housewife or something like that, that that does not mean that they cannot be feminist too. Part of being, I think my definition of feminism is like you just said, people have a choice. And even though like, you know, maybe the prior me would be like, oh, I don't want to be a housewife. Yuck, that's not who I want to be. I realized that I was wrong. Yeah. Because that is feminism is saying, hey, you are your choice. If you want to be, you know, a housewife, if you want to be more of the submissive type, that's you. You are allowed yeah. to be that. And so I feel like just like, uh, I feel like it goes both ways. And I right. think you can translate that into wrestling where it's like, yes, we want and we advocate for these serious female wrestlers to be taken seriously. But also there are women that want to be, you know, more of the sexy type. And I think yeah. for a long time, it took me a while to adjust to that because I only saw things one way but then you start to talk to people you start to get to know people and their definition of feminism and how that all incorporates into one thing so I feel like in the last like really recently like the last two years my ideas of feminism have evolved and just translate to wrestling as women's wrestling as well that's so smart that you said, and that that's really what it is all about. And and I'm the same way. Like even like I, I took a class on, you know, I'm I'm big into like the supporting uh, supporting the LGBTQ plus community. And part of being an ally was like what you just said. Like you have to kind of be willing to explore when you make mistakes. And like maybe you've used someone's wrong pronouns. Maybe you made a little bit of a judgment. And that's really what being a feminist or an ally or an ally to feminism is all about is you have to go, okay, well, am I really looking at this in the right way? Like, for example, my sister uh, was always such a little mother, always wanted to have kids, all that. And she has, you know, she has three kids and we're very different in that way. I'm very like, oh, no, thanks. I can't even have a dog. I travel too much. And, you know, but that's her choice. That's what she's always wanted to do. She's a great example for that same thing. Like you said, she wanted to be a mom and a wife and stay home and things like that. So yeah, feminism is not because you're like a Miranda. You could be a Charlotte. It's all feminism. As long as you support every other and all of my Sex and the City fans will get it. Um, yes. How would you support and empower all of the other women 
that are doing those right choices. And that's the thing. And that's what we sometimes are lacking is where girls will kind of do the thing like, oh, well, who does she think she is? Or, you know, they get jealous. That's We don't have time for that. No, no, no. We're running the world. We don't have time for you to do this and, and make fun of someone or to think someone. And what you just said a minute ago, there are serious wrestlers, but are they going to be shunned because they have an OnlyFans and they want to pose in lingerie? Yeah. Why not? I've Here's something funny quickly. I'll, I'll not to talk your ear off. But with modeling, for example, I just talked about this for the first time ever on a panel in Scotland a couple weekends ago because someone said something about how, like you said, like they weren't sure about, she liked the diva era and was like, I don't know if I'm going to be judged, whatever. And anyway, long story short, I was saying that I have a lot of photos out when I do signings of me and like my bra and panties and whatever. And I was like, I love that kind of modeling. After I got out of wrestling a little bit more, like 2013 out of TNA, I was like, okay, I'm going to do serious modeling. I'll do more fashion. I'll be more serious. I liked it. But after a while, because I was like, maybe it's just forced upon me that I'm doing laundry. I don't know if I like it. I missed it. And I was like, I'm going to go do my own lingerie shoots. Not because TNA or Impact, you know, whatever was, they weren't making it, but it wasn't, it was part of the job description. I loved it. But I was like, well, maybe I want to do something different. I missed that sort of modeling because I find it very sexy. I feel very powerful when I'm in my, you know, cute outfits and acting sassy. And that again is my choice. And if someone else doesn't want to do that, cool. You do you boo, but don't come after me in my lingerie shoots because <laughs> I'm having a great time. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's one of the things too that like I feel like as you're learning and you're growing up and you're meeting other women, that's something that you learn that you definitely definitely learn. So I think it's been it's an interesting conversation to have because I think that like a lot of people really do have the, you know, these different definitions of what uh you know feminism means to them and whatnot. But anyway, so yeah. um and it kind of went off tangent here, but I do want to ask you because though. yeah, no, I love these kinds of conversations. I feel like that's where you learn like the most. But yeah. um I do want to ask you because because this is something that I was interested in, you know, like learning your story. It's like, you know, obviously, you know, you're here, you know, you were an American girl and then you're now in the UK. And I know you've been there now, you said six years. What is, has that transition been like for you? Because obviously it's two different worlds. It's real different. And people like the, (laughs) and it's funny because I'm laughing because people are always like, what do you like better? Like in a cab, I'm asked that like every day. And I'm like, I don't know, because if I say home, America, then I'm really rude. But if I say here, I'm kind of lying because nowhere is home except your home. So exactly. you know, there's nothing, but be- it's not better. It's just different. I would say it's just different. It's not better or worse. Um, but, you know, you like what you like. You like, you know, Tex-Mex and whatever home entails, which for me is stuff like that. Innocuous, silly things, Bath and Body Works, for example. Uh, oh, my God, I can't wait to go shopping when I get there. Um, <laughs> but like you said, it's a big transition. And I think people think, oh, well, they speak the same language, so it's the same. And it's like, no. Uh, everything the, the language is so very quite different um the you know just little things the weather i actually that's one thing that i do not miss about home which orlando florida's home i live the most in orlando florida do not miss the heat and humidity weather over here i will say i love it i love wearing berets and scarves and it's fun but yeah i mean just little things that you miss you didn't think you would miss like bigger streets um you know just random things that are just do you need them? No, but they're just home, you know, like yes. home, of home food is a huge one for me. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of friends, you know, like I was saying earlier, a lot of my husband, bless his heart, a lot of his friends are his friends, you know, because that's, he's been here all his life. And I'm like, okay. So the thing is, and you'll get this because you're lovely and you're a girl making friends when you're older, like in my case, like after 30, when I moved here, it's like dating. So like, girl, oh, yeah. I stood up. I've been, I've had to like break up with people that like, it's not my kind of girl. We're not going to get along. We're not going to mesh. Making friends in a totally new country. That is a mind boggle. That is a really weird minefield of like, uh, yeah. Feels like I it was. Yes, I told that to my fiance one time. I was like, I literally feel like I'm dating women, but not like in a way like, oh, she's a lesbian or anything like that. No, no, no. no, it was like, I will go out and be like, let's say I meet a girl and we're like, oh, we got along, right? Let's go out to brunch or something, right? And then we go out to brunch and then all of a sudden, you know, and especially here in LA, like I'll just be realistic. Uh, you know, a lot of us, including myself, get to sometimes be a little shallow, right? But I've had friends that will go up to me and tell me like, Denise, you need to lose weight. You're not skinny enough. And I I remember what? like, yes, it's a thing. And I just remember thinking like, oh my God, should I be allowing my friends to say this? No. To me, like it makes me feel like horrible. Like I love the honesty. I trust me, I do. I appreciate the honesty. No. But at the same time, like should I be allowing this? And it's crazy because I found that happened to me with two friendships. And so I just kind of went to this thing where I'm like, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. And I would go on to a new friend, fr- spend some time with them. And then something else would happen. And I'd be like, okay, yeah. I don't want to be friends with you anymore. Yeah. And it was interesting because I told my family, like I feel like I'm dating my friends. I'm trying yeah. to find the friend for me, and it's a yeah. real thing. But yeah. you I mean, eventually like breaking do up. Them. 
Yeah. Yes. There's, there's like breakup weird etiquette. There's like ghosting. There's like, what do yes. you do? Do you say, like, I have certain friends where I'm, this is so rude, but I'm like, I think maybe it's because they're not really in entertainment and that's sort of rude to say, but like, they don't get like, I'm just kind of this weird parade float of a big hair, big boobs, American loud person here. Like, I'm like, they don't, I don't translate sometimes. So they kind of have all these weird questions about like, they don't get anything. What do you mean wrestling? You hold cards up? I'm like, oh Jesus Christ, no. So it's a weird thing. It's not even just like, no offense, but in the industry that we're in to go then move countries and explain to people and kind of, and I don't live like, we live a half hour north of London. So it's pretty, a, a small town, especially more than I'm used to in LA and Orlando, and, you know, Houston. Um, so that's that's a big weird one because you just feel like you're weird. But then when people don't, you don't mesh with them. Like there was a girl I went out with, um, and she was like, she just kept saying, "Well, yeah, I'm not a girl's girl. Like I don't really, I don't really like females and blah blah." And I'm thinking, girl, I am a female, so like we're not going to work. Yeah, you know, how are we going to be friends? Water cooler hot and have them hit on you all night. And you think that's fun for you? Kudos, Mazel Tov. But that's not what I enjoy. I want to have female company and like, like you were saying, like lift each other up, not like weird, shallow convert. No. Yes, yeah. exactly. But I totally get you where you're like, when can I find like my picture perfect friend? But I'll tell you when you find them, uh, you gotta, you know, you gotta protect those relationships. It's a lot of give and take, which is nice to obviously have. And I'm glad that I found, you know, at least a few that will get me by. Which yeah, is nice. yeah just a yes. few, just a few, like not even like, I think I have like maybe two or three that I'm like, they're actual, like if something happened, I could call them. Yes. My best friend uh, in Orlando, uh, you know, she and I talk almost every day and it's, I've known her since I was probably 17 years old. And it's just those kind of friendships that you just go, oh my God. And that's kind of the ones that I go home to and I do my Tesla recharge. And it's like, even just going out with her for like a taco salad and just venting, I mean, like bitching about things. It's the most cathartic therapy in the whole world. I completely agree with you. So now uh, I do have one more question to ask you, and then we're going to get into our lightning round. Yeah. And this one kind of revolves around like some of your goals, because that's one of the most interesting things that I like to ask people. It's like, you know, I know we're already into the third month of the year, but it's still fairly a new year. Uh, what yeah. are some of your goals that you still have? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I used to have goals like, um, I'm not somebody who like really makes like unrealistic goals or like, I have to be doing this by the time I'm this age or like be married. <gasps> I have a lot of friends who do that. I'm like, oh girl, don't do that. <laughs> You're fine. Uh, he might be out there, but he might not just enjoy your time. Have, have, another, have another glass of wine. Um, no, I think for, for my goals, I would like to see Gaw keep growing. I would like Gaw to be um, you know, reaching even more people. We've talked about, you know, even possibly doing more like TV because the thing with Gaw is, yes, it's a podcast, but we do mostly YouTube. And like, we're just the kind of people, uh, not to say we're just visually stunning and we have to be on camera, but we're just, you know, look at me how I'm talking my hands. We're just people that are like camera on camera people. You're animated. We, yes. Yeah. We're just, and it's, and I mean, come on, we, we talk about our outfits. If you're just listening and I'm glad people can listen to the podcast, but you know, it, it's, it's a very visual show. We talk about sponsors and like, you know, a little bit of branding with my grown ass women TV mug available now. Uh, so things like that, I think we would translate better into TV. So maybe something like that would be cool. Um, for me, I just would love to have more of what I had before, which, you know, before the pandemic here in uh, the UK, I was hosting lots of comic cons. I'm just now, I just did finish two. And that's something that I love doing because I'll be honest with you, as much as, as much fun as it is to be like, okay, you're hired to do a comic con and you sit there and you sign autographs. That's lovely. But I started to do the thing by going like, Hey, can I do your social media videos? Can I do this? Can I do that? And now I get to host celebrity panels. So like now I'm like on the stage interviewing people. Like, you know, I had um, one of the guys from Harry Potter last week. I've I interviewed like Brendan Fraser. So for me as like a nineties kid, I almost died. He was lovely, stunning, amazing. So stuff like that, like presenting, not totally outside of wrestling, but presenting in like maybe a, a different way would be cool. Um, and I just want to keep getting better at it. I'll tell you, and you, I don't know if you were the same, but during COVID and stuff, my first few interviews back or being on TV back or God TV, whatever it may be, I felt like a little rusty. And I was like, I don't like that feeling. I wanted to be, even these two comic cons that I've just done and, and things like this, which I've so enjoyed. Thank you for having me. It's like, it sort of wets your whistle. Like tomorrow when I go to progress, I'm like, I got this now. All right. I'm back. At yes. This, you know, because when you're not doing it, you're only talking to yourself on Instagram live. It gets a little weird. You're like, I forgot how to talk. Where yeah, did my like, education like, go? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I still got it. Maybe yes. not. So yes. you know, more of the same. I, I'll, this is a bit, um, I want to say vain. I shouldn't say that. It's not right. Um, it's a bit outside of wrestling. But like London Fashion Week, I was making great strides in 2020 to get invited to shows and doing, yeah, like doing fashion um, stuff. And I felt like I was finally kind of ingratiating myself with the right people and getting hired to do some stuff. And then that Miss Rona came in with that Royal Rumble entrance nobody wanted. And now it's sort of kind of getting back to normal. So I think as this kind of wanes off that it'll be better. But yeah, more of the same. And I felt like I was on a tra trajectory. And I hope that keeps happening because 
the last two years have been wacko. I was going to say, I now know who to reach out to, by the way, because I love to do like the award show fashion stuff, like do like, this is the, like the Met Gala looks, the SAG looks, like all of that. Are you kidding me? Like fashion police was my show back in the day. Me too. I love it. I mean, I know it's a little bit like, you know, I know that some things were said back in the day that were not favorable now, but I love those shows. Those shows. I mean, yeah, they got a little far, went a little far, but like, (laughs) that is my, like, if somebody said you could host any show, I'd be like. Please put me on fashion police. Fashion police, exactly. Because it's it's fashion and it's sassy. And the thing is, it's unscripted. Anyone can be a presenter going, hello, welcome to blah, 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 blah. I'm reading this line. But when you're sort of like quick-witted and can just be like, okay, she looks like a Teletubby wrapped in toilet paper. Lovely. That's the kind of humor that I want yes. to give to the world. Exactly. Okay, well, I'm going to have to reach out in the future for these, like maybe the Grammys or some point. I'm going to reach out Girl, to you. The Oscars to, like, is on my show. birthday. The Oscars is on my oh birthday. Oh, my God. Okay, because I was going to say that's WrestleMania. Like, I know it's already like so busy like with WrestleMania week, but we, if we make a day and we go over these looks, I mean, we can do it. We can do it. I want to rip the shreds. Yes, we'll talk about great outfits because my friend and I used to host one on Instagram Live. We called it uh, Sunday Splash. The great outfits were lovely, but we'd go through, but it's people would only respond to the ones that we were like, yes. ew. It was so like best, Yes, best and worst. Oh, I love it. I love to do that stuff. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and jump into our final portion of the interview. This is going to be like the lightning round game and ask you 10 questions about yourself and you just answer them however you please. This is just to get to know you a little bit more. So uh, here we go. Question number one, a snack or food item that you miss most from the United States? Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> Oh, nice. Okay, I love those. Chosen pay-per-view snack of all people with extremely good taste. (laughs) He knows I love you so much. Yes. Question number two. Best snack or food item that you discovered in the UK? Oh, you know what? I I, I can tell you this because I just brought some. I bought some today from my mom. They're called bacon fries. So like they have what 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 they make up for that we're lacking on is like pub food or like bar food, like bar snacks. They have like nuts and like little bacon fries are like a cereal kind of bacon, salty, crispy. I'm a savory person. Everyone that knows what I'm talking about in the UK is like, hell yeah, bacon fries. Well, it sounds good. It's bacon okay. and fries, I'm there. <laughs> Question number three, what's the last TV show that you binge watch? Ooh, I mean, I, I, I watch, when I say this, I hope it doesn't sound insane, but it's going to. I have like Drag Race and Real Housewives on like every single day of my life. It's it's just on, reruns. I just, it comforts me. It's like a baby with a pacifier. I need to hear Ramona screaming or like, you know, RuPaul cackling um but you know what i i did binge watch i'm binge watching the gilded age but it's not done so the one that i like binged i don't even like to binge i like when they come out like every oh, week but i had covid over christmas and i was watching um emily in paris the second season yes people Beyond. buried that show it's amazing though i love it it is it's effing flawless it is everything right with the world it's not too serious the fashion's phenomenal it's paris y'all what else could you ask for Agreed. I so many people trash that show and I'm like, why does everything have to be so serious? Like, I don't want to be watching like it's blessed, like, you know, all of the serious shows on HBO Max and Netflix, but I don't want to be watching such serious, dark stuff no. all the time. I want to no. relax and watch a girly show. And that's Emily in Paris. Exactly. And not in the, the thing is not in these troubled times. Like I kind of find myself down a rabbit hole of watching like crime shows. And my husband's like, oh, no wonder you're having nightmares because you're watching some crazy serial killer stuff. Emily in Paris, anyone that doesn't like it, it's fine because not everybody has taste. So <laughs> yes, I love that show. So I, I like support you 100% on that yeah. one. And also like anytime I like, I don't watch, um, there was another show that RuPaul did where I watched him in cause I didn't watch him in drag race, but I watched him on another show. I would have been in some fashion show that he was on. AJ and the queen maybe. No. Or you know what? I think it was body ink or some sort oh. of competition show that he was a, a judge on. And oh my God, I Ooh. loved him on that show. Cause he's so like, cut he's like he's not a cutthroat like I don't know if you want to call him cutthroat but he's very no. honest he reminds yes. me of Tyra Banks like back in the day when she was doing America's Girl. Next Top Model you are did we just become best friends are we yes. kindred because my little like it goes Oprah it goes, I mean not even in order Oprah Tyra and RuPaul are like that's the trifecta of like power uh, powerful positivity everything those are like my three gurus and RuPaul I mean I oh my god I can't even that would be an entirely different show yeah. yes yes no I loved I loved Tyra Banks back in the day like she was like oh I loved her like she was just so honest and but not like in a bad way like no. she was still like a good person but she was very honest and I used to watch her talk show too which was really good oh she's so good she's very underrated and she's like, oh she's canceled I'm like no no she's phenomenal and trust me 
She's yeah, I would say bring her thing. back. Do another show. Bring her back. Yeah. Uh, question number four, your birthday's coming up. How are you planning on celebrating? Oh, great question. Um, I have no flipping idea, and I keep going back and forth. Um, I will say it's a day off, and I will be in Orlando where my you know hometown is, all my friends are. Um, I don't know. I was going to go to the theme parks. Epcot's my favorite. It's funny because I grew up like loving Epcot and going to Epcot to all the European countries. And now my mom used to say, you know, when you go there, it's not the same. This is the Disney version. And I'm like, no, actually I've been to like maybe nine out of 10 of those places and they're all even better than Epcot. But it's, <laughs> that's like my happy place, but it's spring break and I don't want to deal with all that. So I don't think I'm going to theme park it. I'm thinking maybe like, is it on a, it's on a, a Sunday, I believe. So maybe like a brunch, big hat brunch. Uh, some sort of Tex-Mex will be consumed because that's lovely. Emma. Got to do it. Uh, question number five, who was your fashion icon? Oh, God, these questions are phenomenal. Ooh, of all time. I mean, Rue's up there. Rue Paul's up there. Um, ooh, there is a, a, a lady that in people who really like fashion, they can Google her. She's one of the person that I always say I love everything she's ever worn. And her name is Yulia, uh, Yuliana Serginko, and she has her own fashion line. She is, I believe, a Russian uh socialite designer she's amazing um fashion icon you know i love iris apple she just turned 100, 100 this year i love anyone that sort of has an unapologetic approach to fashion what i can't stand and and doing kind of fashion blogging and stuff is i'm all for someone trying to do you know put together outfits if it's not like if it if i can tell that you haven't put a lot of thought in kudos but don't tell me how to dress. I want to look at someone and go, oh girl, she thought about those shoes and she she thought about matching that. And she wore that little extra glove that she doesn't need that, she doesn't need that glove, but she wore it for fun. In an airport, do I need to have a cape on? No. Do I want it for dramatic effect? Yes. So that I like anyone that's very extra in that way. That like really I can tell they took time. Um, there's a lot of people in wrestling that are good at that. Like Natalia is one of those that she just gets fashion. She's very, very woke in that way. Yeah. Oh, I have a lot of I mean, oh, that's a good question. Oh, I'm trying to think who else. Th those are some, though, that I can I can reveal. I love it. And I can tell already, too, because I can tell, like, in the headband that you chose and, you know, the printed shirt. Like, I love that. Uh, question number six. What movie can you watch over and over and never get sick of? Um, well, my favorite movie of all time that I could – I feel like when it's on, I have to watch it because I love it. But it is sad and it's a lot – it takes a lot out of you. It's Titanic. I'm the biggest Titanic fan in the world. I saw That's it 11 so times in the theater. It's a four-hour movie, folks. I saw it 11 times. I was obsessed. Um, but you know what's one of those that I just it just came to mind because I think you'll appreciate this. Because it's like, again, if it's on, I just don't turn it off. It's like, oh, it's on. I don't care what part it's on. The Devil Wars product. Yes. Yes. Agreed. 100%. Love that. That scene where she has the, I can't even, where Vogue is playing and she has the makeover and like they make her look cute. That and she's just brush. walking with all of the different looks. Are you? I cut my hair like Anne Hathaway when that movie came out because I love that scene so much. And when oh. they like, Oh, I loved it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's, and it's such an easy, watchable film. Again, it's not too serious. Like, Titanic, lovely, but it's like, oh, God, it gets serious. It's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, oh, and then the boat sinks. Oopsie. Spoiler alert, everybody. <laughs> Devil Wars Prada is like, it's just fun. Sex in the City, too. Anytime it's on, it's just, it just, you keep it on. Yes. I feel you on that one. I, there's certain movies that you can just watch all the time, and those are definitely some of those. Uh, question number seven, where's one place you haven't gone to but wish that you can visit? Oh, great question. Um... You know a weird one that my husband had booked for, I think it was my birthday or his birthday, uh, probably 2020. It's a very obscure place, but if you understand my like of travel, like my ultimate dream vacation, I always say to people, it's a great way to get to know people. If you won the lottery, where would you go, right? Everyone's like, a beach and outside. And I'm like, ew, I would go to Prague. I know that's weird. It's in the Czech Republic, but it's like, gloomy and like sexy and like gothic baroque architecture and like dark which is yes. funny because doesn't think that about me they go oh my god so cow i'm like no, no 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 i like like europe like that like cafes and like you know turrets and like i love architecture and art and like gothic that's my number one and um, i'd also love to go to japan i've never been can you imagine i think you'll understand this too because you love fashion Japan, I just want to go and sit and just watch all of the amazing. It'd be like a fashion show every day. Just fashion, fashion, fashion. Tokyo. Yeah. Got to do it. Got to do it. But I get you on like Prague and stuff. Like I've seen the photos and I, I get what you mean. Like I love the art. Like when you see this throughout Europe, you go through different cities and they all have like yeah. their different unique architecture. It's so pretty. It's so just pretty. beautiful. It's very romantic. And like I would love, yes. I love to go when it's cold. Like some of these places, I'm like, I don't want to go in the summer. I want to go when it's like beret weather. Like hip, hip beret. I've got my outfit. <laughs> I'm twirling. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's amazing. Uh, question number eight, what's your favorite place to visit while you're here in SoCal? Oh, oh God, everywhere. I haven't been back, honestly, to California. And I was thinking next year, I think WrestleMania is in LA. So thank God I'll have an excuse to go. Um, my hangouts were Melrose for the vintage shopping. Yes. Yes. Uh, my favorite restaurant was a place called, I don't even know if it's there anymore. Luis's Trattoria. It's an Italian restaurant. Ooh, I don't know. But I don't know, Not actually. Sure. Acapulco Mexican food. Anywhere that has Tex-Mex. Um, I know this sounds weird because they have them in other places, but I I, I do like in and out but I love Carl's Jr. Yeah. Go, oh, well, it can be, what's the other one that they think it is, but it's not the same. Hardee's, not the oh, same. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I love it. Tater Tots at Carl's Jr., really good. <laughs> yeah. The, the Bever- there was a Beverly Hills um, area, like a mall that was great, too. The shopping is just unparalleled. It's just Oh, cool. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's and there's cool. like, there's malls everywhere here. Everywhere, everywhere. Uh, question number nine. Have you ever been starstruck? Oh. Oh, many, many times, many times. I was just uh, talking to a gentleman earlier about Stephanie McMahon, and I've now met her, well, physically shook her hand once. Another time was in a backstage extra production, and I didn't, like, shake her hand, but she was there. That's literally my personal – you talk about Tyra and Oprah, and, and and yeah, that's, like, my personal – like, I would not be in any, any sort of wrestling capacity. She was my, you know, um, which the blueprint, if you will, for the SoCal Val character. Um but outside of wrestling, I'll tell you, this is a weird one. Um, because I host the Comic Cons and stuff, sometimes they'll even say to me, like, who do you want to interview? I'm like, oh, my God, that's a big one. Christina Ricci I picked, Brennan Fraser. But there was one lovely lady, and I, my favorite show probably of all time, at least periodic drama speaking, is um, The Tudors. And Natalie Dormer, people probably know more so from Game of Thrones, and she had a quick part in Captain America. She's an actress that I just loved her as Anne Boleyn so much. I, just, I mean, I've seen that series about a gazillion times. And I literally, my laptop was here and my husband saw her walk in and was like, oh, there she is. And I cried. And he was just saying, like, oh. and I just, I just started crying. I just started, I never said hello to her, didn't make eye contact. And I'll tell you this, talk about fashion. Uh, with all due respect, people that come to Comic Cons as actors, I think some of them purposely dress down and they're like, oh, well, I'm an actor. I'll wear this gray sweatshirt. So people think I'm very like, what? not our Miss Natalie Dormer. She came like makeup, updo, duress. Both days she looked like phenomenal. I was like, oh my God. She's like my fantasy best friend. Like I would <laughs> die, but I couldn't speak to her. People were like, well, why? And I said, I don't know. If if I said to her, like how much her character meant to me, I would have just, <laughs> so I didn't. I just sat up behind my laptop and just had tears running down my face like an idiot. I get you. I 100% get you where you just have that moment where you're like, okay, I know I love this person, but I'm just going to chill and just kind of yes. like sit back here and just enjoy the moment, you know? Yes. Yes. Oh, and Poppy Valour, my favorite drag queen of all time. My husband got me a meet and greet with her and my, my, my palms were clammy and sweaty and I cried and her husband was like, oh, cause I said, I'm, right before I was going to meet her, I said, I'm freaking out. And he goes, no, no, no. Cause I was, I was next in line. And he goes, no, no, no. Come stand with me. I'll freak out with you. I was like, okay. And I met her. I think I told her she was beautiful about six times. I just think she's made so much change in the world and so much. She's just doing the work. She's just so, oh, just look her up. Sasha Fuller, if anyone doesn't know who she is. And that was like, I I was sweating and crying. Oh, my God. That's incredible. I think to have those moments is pretty cool. I know some people are like, I can't get starstruck by celebrities. I'm like, then you're missing out. because I don't blast. trust people that say that kind of crap. Like, everyone yeah. has somebody. And if you don't, then who the hell do you think you are? That's weird. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I got, like, a million people that I, like, love. And I'm like, oh, my God, I would die if I met this person. Yeah. Uh, question number 10. Uh, how would you describe yourself in three words or less? <laughs> oh, God. Um, I feel like Mickey and Lisa would be laughing at me right now. Um, <laughs> the first word I'll use is um, emotional. I'm very emotional. I cry at the drop of the hat. Um, <laughs> driven, emotional, driven. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one that's like fun because these are all very serious. Uh, oh, uh, extra. <laughs> I love it. No, I love all of those. Emotionally driven, driven and really. extra. Yeah. Yeah. I saw I'm this an emotionally meme. driven extra person, Denise. That's- there you go. I saw this meme and I forget the exact verbiage, but I feel like you'll you'll like this. It was somewhere like, oh, people will complain that you're extra or bougie or high maintenance, but I'm the one basically making sure that my high maintenance means are met. I, I didn't do it properly. Like I didn't do I that mean-, mean justice, but but it's a good one though. It's a good yeah. one. Yeah. There's a, you shouldn't apologize. That's another feminism thing. You shouldn't apologize for being like you. Like I didn't always, I don't love that I'm like such a crier, but like, and it happens on the show all the time. I'm gaw. And I'm like, well, that's me. If you don't know me, like you could, like Alan will sometimes like show like, a, there's a puppy that's injured. I'm like, oh my God, like I'm just a crier. Like I just, that's how I am. I wear my heart. 
Yeah, exactly. Oh, Wait, my gosh. God made me. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I feel like I found my soul sister here. Like we're connecting on so many different levels. Like I like I could yeah, I could talk to you forever, but I, I have taken up way more of your time than I said I would. No so worries. first of all, I want to thank you for devoting all of this time and you know for everything you guys are doing with WrestleMania. I just think it's really awesome. I'm glad to help in this small way. Um, so before we go, please feel free to plug in anything you want to plug in. Oh, thank you so much. Well, first of all, you're an absolute pro and a star. And I, before I'd even met you on there, I was like, this girl has got it. So you should be so, so, so proud of yourself. And if you're not, don't worry, because I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, you. But yeah, no, thank you for that. Because WrestleMania is amazing. It's going to be great. Um, I will tell you that the easiest way to uh, to access anything God TV related is just, it's very easy. It's, uh, first of all, as you can see, this mug here, there we go, grown ass women, G-A-W, GAWTV.com is where you can find everything. We have our eBay links. We have our Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Um, and pa Patreon is actually where you can get our uh, unfiltered hour-length episodes. Usually we do about half an hour on YouTube. The rest is on Patreon. So GAWTV.com is going to have all the info on WrestleMania at WrestleCon. It's Saturday, April 2nd, 2 to 3 p.m. And, of course, if you're following Mickey, myself, and Lisa, we tweet about it all the time. Any info you need, though, we have contact pages as well there for GawTV.com. And we just appreciate everyone being so so open to the idea and so generous in their donations and also just so supportive. Even if people don't donate, they're just so proud of what we're doing and honoring Daphne and honoring Tag Me In. So the reception has already been great, but the actual cocktail reception, see what I did there, is going to be even better. 100%. Well, thank you so much again for doing this interview. Before we go, just a heads up, guys, I am posting all of the links in the description box below. So just click down there and you'll find everything that you are looking for. But other than that, please do not forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and thank you so much for watching this. Until next time, I'm Denise Salcedo. This is SoCal Val, and we'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone. Yay!